fluid dynamics. Uh, so here we're going to talk about two different types of fluid flow, laminar flow and turbulent flow. So in laminar flow, we have the paths of the particles not crossing each other. In turbulent flow, we have the particle paths uh, crossing each other. So the paths of the particles do not cross each other and every fluid particle arriving at a given point has the same uh, velocity. So that's basically our steady or laminar flow. And the turbulent flow where the particle paths cross it occurs about a critical speed and this has whirlpool-like regions. So you can see that uh, we have these whirlpool-like regions uh, in the turbulent flow. Now, the internal friction associated with the resistance of two adjacent layers of fluids moving relative to each other is called uh, viscosity. So it, it's basically um, analogous to friction in solids. So we have uh, layers of fluids uh, moving with respect to each other and there is a friction uh, that develops between them which is due to uh, the viscosity of the fluid. Now having distinguished between a steady laminar flow and turbulent flow, what is an ideal fluid? So an ideal fluid has no viscosity. Viscosity eta is equal to zero. It's non-viscous. Uh, the flow type is laminar, so the velocity uh, of the fluid particles is a function of r. It's a single-valued function. You can see here, because the particle paths cross each other here, you have different velocities uh, at a given point, but in laminar flow, that's not the case. The fluid is incompressible. That means it has a constant density. We don't have density variation. Uh, with, with location and it's irrotational, the angular uh, momentum is zero. So we don't have these whirlpool-like regions, etc. Okay, so with these four assumptions, uh, non-viscous, laminar, incompressible and irrotational, uh, let's consider an ideal fluid flow through a pipe. So you can see at t equals to zero, fluid in the blue portion is moving past point one at velocity v1. So this is our cross-sectional area a1 and the fluid particles have traveled a distance delta x1, uh, which is v1 times delta t. Uh, so after this time interval uh, delta t, the fluid in the blue portion is moving past point two at velocity v2. So while these fluid particles are moving uh, into the pipe, there are fluid particles exiting the pipe. And in this time interval, we have V2 delta T, delta X2. That's the region where these particles exiting the uh, pipe are coming from. And here the cross-sectional area is A2. And once again, this is an ideal, ideal fluid. So if we consider the mass of the fluid entering the pipe, we have to multiply density with the volume. What is the volume? A1 times delta X1, which is V1 times delta T. So this will be density times A1 delta X1, which is rho times A1 V1 delta T. What is the mass of the fluid exiting the pipe? The density multiplied with the volume A2 times delta X2. So it's rho A2 V2 delta T. And we define area times velocity, area times dx dt as dv dt, which is the volume flux. So the rate of change of uh, volume. So uh, the mass is conserved. The mass that is entering the pipe should be equal to the mass that is leaving the pipe. Uh, why is the mass conserved? Because we have an incompressible fluid. The density is uh, constant and uh, the density times a1 v1 delta t should be equal to density times a2 v2 delta t. Delta t is disappear, density is disappear. We see that a1 v1, which is the uh, volume flux entering the pipe, is equal to a2 v2. That's the volume flux leaving the pipe. So the volume flux is constant. So uh, this equation, which states that uh, the 
Uh, rate of change of volume dv dt is a constant is called continuity equation for fluids. And now we're going to see an application of this for a, a hose that is used to water a garden. A gardener uses a water hose to fill a 30 liters bucket. The gardener notes that it takes one minute to fill the bucket. A nozzle with an opening of cross-sectional area 0.5 cm square is then attached to the hose. So you can see this is the uh, cross-sectional area of the hose. This is the cross-sectional area of the nozzle. The nozzle is held so that the water is projected horizontally from a point 1 meters above the ground. Over what horizontal distance can the water be projected? So we're basically filling a bucket here. So uh, there is a bucket that we are trying to fill. All right. So uh, the volume of the uh, bucket is 30 liters. 30 liters corresponds to 30 times 10 to minus 3 meter cube. So 1 meter cube is 1000 liters. The time to fill delta T is 1 minute and 1 minute is 60 seconds. Uh, the cross-sectional area of the nozzle AN this is the nozzle cross-sectional area that is 0 0.5 centimeter square this is 0 0.5 times 10 to minus 4 meter square the distance to the ground h is 1 meters we're projecting horizontally and what we would like to know is delta x uh, that is basically the horizontal distance over which the water is projected. So that is this distance. All right, so what is the volume flux? The volume flux is uh, delta V over delta T, which is the volume that we are filling is 30 liters, so it's going to be uh, 30 10 to minus 3 meter cube divided by 60 seconds and that gives us a flux of 0 0.5 times 10 to minus 3 meter cube per second and the volume flux is equal to the area cross-sectional area of the nozzle times the velocity of the fluid particles leaving the nozzle and we see that the velocity of the fluid particles v will be the uh, ratio volume flux 0 0.5 times 10 to minus 3 divided by uh, the area of the nozzle which is 0 0.5 times 10 to minus 4 so this gives us 10 meters per second horizontal speed uh, for the fluid particles that are leaving the nozzle. So basically we're talking about this uh, speed here, V, horizontal uh, speed with which they're leaving the nozzle. And now the rest is basically free fall. We have a, a, a vertical distance H uh, under the influence of gravitational acceleration. So we have uh, G pointing down uh, for free fall, h is equal to 1 half gt square. So the time of flight is basically uh, the, the distance we travel, h multiplied by 2, divided by gravitational acceleration. Uh, so this is going to be 0 0.452 seconds. So what is the range? of the projectile delta x will be v our horizontal uh, velocity multiplied by delta t so this will be uh, 10 times 
zero point four five two. So we will see that the range for the uh, fluid particles, the water particles, is approximately four point five two meters. So this will be our final answer. So this is a direct application of uh, the continuity equation, the volume flux is a constant and therefore we can use it to calculate the range of the projectile. Okay, so in this lecture we have talked about uh, different types of fluid flow. We have steady or laminar flow where these uh, streamlines, the lines of particles, trajectory lines for the particles in the fluid do not cross each other and they all arrive at a certain point with the same velocity. In turbulent flow, the particle paths cross, we have whirlpool-like regions, and the uh, switch from laminar flow to turbulent flow occurs above a critical uh, speed. So this is basically uh, when V is greater than a critical speed, Vc. And uh, when we consider the motion of the uh, planes of particles moving relative to each other, if there is a, going to be a friction between these uh, planes that's called uh, viscosity. It's measured by the viscosity of the fluid. And for an ideal fluid, the viscosity eta is zero, it's non-viscous. The flow is laminar, the particle paths do not cross each other. It's irrotational, there's no angular momentum. Angular momentum is zero, incompressible, and the density is a constant. So when we consider an ideal flow through a pipe, when we write the mass entering a region in time delta t and the corresponding mass leaving the pipe at uh, time delta t, these two masses should be the same because mass per volume is a constant, it's, it's an incompressible fluid. Uh, uh, basically, we, we're going to have uh, the volume flux a constant, so dv dt is a constant, so a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2, which is called the continuity equation for the fluids. So that's cross-sectional area uh, a1 multiplied by the tangential uh, speed v1 is equal to a2, cross-sectional area of the exit region, and tangential speed uh, v2, so tangential velocity v2. Now, uh, we have seen an application here for a watering uh, hose. Uh, we, when we attach a nozzle to it, uh, the advantage is that we, by decreasing the cross-sectional area, we're increasing the velocity of the particles. So you can see that uh, normally we wouldn't get much of a horizontal pro uh, range here, but by decreasing this nozzle area, because when we decrease the area, velocity will increase, uh, there will be a, a, an appreciable uh, tangential uh, velocity which is horizontal to the ground uh, to fill this bucket and we when we calculate the volume flux uh, delta v over delta t th that we find by looking at the volume we fill and the time it takes to fill the volume and set it equal to the area of the nozzle times the horizontal uh, speed v uh, we can calculate the speed with which these particles are leaving the nozzle and then uh, because uh, the motion on the y-axis does not have any in initial uh, velocity, we have free fall, h is equal to one half gt square. So we can find the time it takes to complete the uh, projectile motion and the range is just v times delta t. So this gives us a quite large range.